Welcome to another edition of Life Talk. I'm your host, Chris Wilkes. Today's topic is the chosen few. The chosen few. Taken from the Matthew, the book of Matthew 22, 14, where it records, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. There is a process, an interval, a space, a time period between being called to something and chosen to something. There's a, there's a time of preparation to get ourselves ready for what God wants us to be. Many are called, but few are chosen. I, it reminds me of my time in the United States Army when I was in a, what, we, what they call boot camp. It was called basic training. It was an eight-week course. And there were certain disciplines that you had to adhere to before you can be uh, a person that's called to be a United States soldier, to being chosen. One who had enough discipline that if you had to fight on a battlefield, you can survive the elements. You can survive rigorous mental, psychological, physical training. It's called the, the boot camp. And God takes us all through a test. And the test comes in Isaiah 48 and 10, where it records, Behold, I have not refined thee with silver, but I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. The furnace of my friends, is where God puts us in situations, life situations. And sometimes we put ourselves in these situations. Well, he wants to burn the impurities out of us. In other words, God wants that part of you, of me, that we refuse to give. That's what he wants. <laughs> he wants that part of us that we refuse to give. Or we can give some tithes and offerings and praise, and we come to church, and we know all the Christian colloquialisms. But but there's a part of us, or parts of us, that many of us refuse to give, and that's the part he wants. That's the thing that's keeping you from being full and complete. There's a part of you that you refuse to give, and it's the reason why our marriages are messed up. Our relationship between our parents are messed up. The, the, our relationships on our jobs are messed up because the job is requiring something from you that you refuse to give. Be a little nicer. Stop being so cold and, and callous. So he, he takes us through this furnace. What are some of the things we refuse to give? It could be anything. It could be that explosive ego. It could be your pride, that lust. The Bible said pride comes before a fall. It could be hatred. Whatever that thing is, you know what it is. I know what it is about me. He wants that part of us that we refuse to give. He wants us to, to give in to what he wants. Now, the fire is not meant to hurt us or make us bitter, but make us better. It reminds me of the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know the familiar Bible story, how, how they wouldn't dance to the king Nebuchadnezzar's music. And, and they said, we will. In other words, we will burn before we turn. They said, if God does not deliver us from this furnace, we still know he's able. So they, they walked in the fire. And they were not consumed, so Nebuchadnezzar told the guards, he said, turn up the heat seven times hotter. It was so hot that the guards that were at the gate got burned up. Nebuchadnezzar looked in that furnace. He said, I see the image of, of a fourth man. I only put three in there. I see the image of a fourth man, the image as of the Son of God. In other words, we, there are preachers that preach, and they say, well, you know, God took the heat out of the fire. Oh, yes, it, no, he didn't. The Bible doesn't say that. God fireproofed him. If you allow God to get in that furnace with you, God will fireproof you. He'll devil-proof you. He'll sex-proof you. He'll racist-proof you. Things are happening in your life, but it don't have to boss you around. You don't. The, the mind is the, is the greatest battlefield. As a man thinketh in his heart, or a woman or a child thinketh in their heart, so is he. It is all in the way you think. The, you can't always say, man, this glass is half empty. The glass is half full. You have to be optimistic about life. 
and put a smile on your face and say, God is going to work things out for me. Romans 8, 28 says, for we know, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God to the called according to his purpose. God has a purpose for your life. And the purpose for your life is the passion for whatever it is God put in you. People say, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. What am I supposed to be doing? Your, your passion. But you can't get there unless you allow God to burn those impurities out of you. You got to get it out of you. And don't forget now, he's with you in it. You might have to cry sometimes. You might lose some friends. You might lose some family members. You might even lose a spouse. But whatever it takes, by any means necessary, God will get that stuff out of you and make you full and complete. And Job said in Job 23 and 10, after we've been tried, or in other words, after you've been tried in the fire, you will come out as pure gold. Gold, when a, when a goldsmith is refining gold, he burns the impurities out of it to the place where you can see your reflection in that gold plate. The like figure. When God sees you after the impurities are burned out of you and those hateful ways and those hateful stubborn attitudes and those, and those, and those proclivities and propensities are burned out of you, then he will see his reflection in you. And that's when you know when you're ready. That's the time when you are ready to be presented to the world after you've been tried in the fire and you come out as pure gold. That's my time for today. And always remember, always remember, when you get out the bed in the morning, this is a practice I have, you have to say to yourself after you pray, say the best is yet to come. God bless you. Mm -hmm.